Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you have had a good start to your week. <clears throat> welcome Lydia. Hi Domenico, Elizabeth, Fuang. Nice to see many of our members in the class. Hi Anna. Nipa, good to see our regular students as well. Welcome everybody. We are looking at IELTS speaking part one, talking about friends. And this material, as usual, is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there. For general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. We will be using these websites today in this class to speak with students. These are the websites that power these live classes. So everybody, when you're getting ready for the IELTS, I highly recommend going to our websites. This is gieltshelp.com, general IELTS, clicking this big red button that's just above my head there and joining our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. For the academic, it's the blue background. Again, just click that big red button there and you are good to go. We're an IDP affiliate, we're a British Council partner, we're an IELTS test registration center, and we help thousands of students daily to succeed on their IELTS exams. Check out their stories on our websites. Become one of those students, join the premium package. You can use the code uh, sitar9 from our most recent uh, video where a candidate talks about the sitar very very well for apps go to your app store get academic IELTS help and general IELTS help you can link the app to the websites welcome Carolina hi Amra good to see our chat moderators in the class as well here to help us conduct a smooth and effective lesson. Instagram IELTS underscore AE help and G IELTS help for reels uh, with vocabulary and uh, practice for the speaking section. Lots of goodies there. Uh, absolutely check that out. And if you still have questions, uh, send me an email adrian at aehelp.com and admin at aehelp.com. We will get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, we have our books on Amazon, AE Helps Academic IELTS, GE Helps General IELTS. For those of you who would like to have a copy of the exams on your device, you can get it from Amazon. But again, it's just best to get the uh, full premium course that includes the books. All right, students, um, so speaking part one for everybody right now, we're going to go through some questions, some strategies, specifically on the topic of friends, okay? And then tomorrow, we're going to have task two writing for members, and then listening part three and four for subscribers, finishing off that uh, exam that we started last week for the listening section. Uh, tomorrow's my birthday too and also Bastille Day in France. <laughs> so a special day tomorrow on the 14th. And then um, speaking uh, part two, speaking part three on Saturday. All right, uh, check out this video when you have a chance. Uh, it's our newest uh, speaking video. It's a good one. There it is. It's in the chat. All right, everybody, so speaking, let's get into it. Now, this is a speaking class, everybody, so a good first step is to listen, listen to what I'm saying. But of course, to really make the most of this class, you need to speak. So make sure to speak and repeat. You can copy my pronunciation, my intonation. I speak with a relatively, I don't know, medium, um, level of speed for natural native English and uh, I certainly use a, a fairly clear form of, uh, of English in the sense that it's the West Coast North American accent and it's quite a crisp uh, version of the English language which is fairly easy to understand for most people around the world so go ahead and repeat what I say and the way I say it 
All right, so you go to your IELTS speaking exam one hour early. Um, you get familiar with the exam center, you look for some people wandering around, um, and you ask someone to practice uh, your English, your IELTS speaking questions. Then 20 minutes before your test starts, um, you have to register, you get comfy, go to the washroom, and then you go to your interview. Okay. There will be an examiner that's, you know, like me, um, very good at English, right? Uh, often a native speaker, um, sometimes a, not a native speaker, but a well-trained expert, professional in English. And then they will say, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. The exam has three parts. I will give you instructions uh, for each. May I see your identification, please? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. May I see your identification, please? A lot of students are very nervous when they walk in and they get this first question, so they kind of fumble their answer. But you should practice and you should give a nice, professional, fluent, confident answer to this first question. Okay. Thanks, Chayani. I hope your exam went well, Chayani. All right. Boom, Boomaka says, sure, gladly, here is my passport. Please have a look. Yeah, that's okay. All right. So this is Bumika's answer. It's fairly good. Uh, I like how you added gladly. Sure. Gladly. Here's my passport. Please have a look. Yeah, that works. When you say that confidently, it's fine. You don't need to say much more than that. S for shorts says yes this <laughs> yes here's my passport that I used to register for my IELTS exam please have a look yeah just a little mistake there um, s4 always practice your uh, punctuation and capitalization even in the chat students so make sure that uh, you know you're using your best English always uh, yes comma here's my passport that I used to register for my IELTS exam, uh, comma, please have a look. Okay. All right. Elizabeth says, Yes, absolutely. Here's my passport that I've used for my IELTS exam. Please have a look. Good, Elizabeth, that's good. Um, when you use the word absolutely, it shows a lot of confidence, okay? Generally, um, in uh, natural English, when you say yes, absolutely, it means you're really confident in what you're saying. So it's a good way uh, to respond. Yes, absolutely. And we emphasize it. We almost always emphasize that word or stress the word absolutely. So yes, absolutely. Here's my passport that I've used for my IELTS exam. Please have a look. Okay, that is fantastic. All right, Chayani, I'm just looking at your scores now. I was too curious. Uh, AE helps and mates. Thank you so much for your assistance. I got listening seven, reading six, writing six, speaking 6.5, overall 6.5. Although it's enough, I would like to take the exam again. Ooh, Chayani, challenging yourself. Good, good for you. Those are some solid marks, Chayani. Congrats on getting those marks. All right, students, so to get these good marks like Chayani, practice is definitely key. 
an understanding and using good strategy is very, very important. Um, fluency is really, really important. So C Chani 6.5, it's it's solid for speaking. It means you're between fluent and good. Okay. Um, so here we go. The next question that the examiner will ask you very often while you're still holding your passport is what is your full name? So again, for this one, you want to give a nice, full, fluent answer. What is your full name? Give me a nice, full sentence answer for this one. What is your full name? All right, we've got some good answers coming up here from our viewers. Let's take a couple. This answer is from Mai. Uh, Mai says, my full name is Lei Vu Hong Mai, but it's okay, call me by my English name, Emrys. All right, Emrys. Um, but it's okay to uh, call me by my English name, Emrys. Um, okay, so that's okay, my. Um, the but it's okay is a little bit strange in this situation, so I would say it a little bit differently. Uh, I would say it like this. Let me just make this a bit bigger, my. So my full name is Lei Wu Hong Mai. And especially if your examiner looks like they're maybe from an English speaking country, I would probably say something like, uh, it's a bit uh, tricky to pronounce, so I like to be called um, by my English name, Emrys. Uh, by a uh, non-Vietnamese, right? So you can say that. My full name is Lei Wu Hong Mai. It's a bit tricky to pronounce, so I like to be called by my English nickname Emrys by non-Vietnamese. Please do so, okay? Like that, you can say that, sure. All right, Kotax 3 has this answer for us. I'm Thompson Makota. Thompson is my first name and Makota is my surname. Uh, please call me by my nickname, Tommy. Not you can also call me. Please call me is better. Please call me uh, by my nickname, uh, Tommy. Okay, it's better like that. It's a little bit more direct. Again, when you meet um, like an examiner in a formal situation, you need to use the right English. It's not just about using English, but it's about using the right English. In this case, you have to keep in mind that the examiner is a stranger, they're in a position of authority, they're an examiner, they're there to mark your English, it's a professional setting. So you do have to keep in mind these elements to really maximize your IELTS score. You must not treat the IELTS speaking interview like a casual conversation, okay? There are some strange videos out there in the great world of YouTube and the internet that try to explain to you that it's just kind of a combo. You're having a combo with a pal. You're sitting down for a 15 minute little chit chat, talking about this and that. No, that's not the right approach. You can do that, and you probably get an all right mark, especially if you're you know very good in English. But to get your best mark, you have to use a little bit more strategic communication. Okay, strategic communication. So uh, speak clear, confident, professional, now, that doesn't mean you can't use casual English, so you can use slang. In fact, it's not a bad idea, it's a good idea uh, to use a bit of slang um, and to use a bit of, uh, let's say, colloquial English, means everyday English, like wanna, gonna, 
Um, but you need to do that within the context of a formal uh, conversation. Okay, you'll see what I mean when we do this a little bit more. Okay, all right. So the next question the examiner will ask you in a lot of cases is, do you work or study? <clears throat> so give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Do you work or study? Nitesh has this answer for us today. Nitesh says, recently I have just completed my high school. I have been cramming for the IELTS in order to meet my requirements to study my bachelor's degree in the <clears throat> United States. Natash, that's great. Okay. Uh, do you work? I'm not sure. The, you don't really answer that part of the question. So um, try to answer the questions completely, students. Uh, complete answers get good marks. The best marks for your speaking section are awarded for complete, clear answers that do not go off topic. Keep that in mind. So the best marks or the highest marks uh, in IELTS speaking are awarded for complete answers that do not keep the examiner guessing and do not go off topic, okay? That's what you should be practicing. And one great way to discover this is when you're practicing with partners and you ask them, do you feel like I answered the question completely? Do you have any questions in your head? And if they're like, no, nope, I think it was clear, then you know you're on the right track. Also ask them, did I go off topic? Do you feel like I was rambling or ranting about information that you didn't ask me? And if they're like, yeah, I kind of think you did. You were talking about the moon and the stars and the rabbits in the forest. Then you know that you're speaking a little bit too much. And in that case, the examiners will often interrupt you in the actual IELTS exam. So here with Natesha's answer, uh, we get that Natesh graduated. We can guess that Natesh is probably not working because they just graduated, but we don't know that, right? That's guessing. So uh, Natesh, to make it a really good answer, answer that question, right? So um, recently I have just completed my high school. I have been cramming for the IELTS in order to meet my requirements to study my bachelor's degree in the United States, and I am not employed. Okay, just that little bit, and I am not employed, is enough to satisfy that question of do you work or don't you work or what's going on. And now you just use the word employed. And employ, to have a job, right? It's a nice piece of vocabulary. So even though the examiner might not technically be marking you for these introductory questions, when you use vocabulary like I'm not employed, then the examiner's head does go bing. Candidate used the word employed, good English, check. Okay, so uh, in some ways the examiner is like a um, bit of a robot inside their head. There's some certain uh, features of your speaking that they're really paying attention to and when those features are presented then the examiner's head kind of like a robot will recognize it will go ding they just use the present perfect grammar they just use the word employed that's band seven vocabulary okay so i know that sounds weird but believe me think about it the examiner is sitting there all day every day listening to students of course their brain goes kind of robotic after a while right so uh, so you want to do that. You want to show that. And that's why I'm telling you that it's not a casual chit chat, right? It's not just a little convo that you're having with the examiner. All right. Um, Priya. Let's see what Priya has here. By the way, students, if you catch me uh, using some new words that are not familiar for you, make sure to write them down. You can even share them in the chat. You're like, hey, Adrian, just use that word. That's interesting. And share them with your um, peers. They might want to know them as well, especially if you 
uh, understand them. Like convo is the slang for conversation. Okay. All right. Um, Priya says, well, I've been working at industry and commerce ministry for five years as a manager, as well as previously, I used to work at district secretariat office for two years as a relationship officer. I think it's relations uh, officer here, um, Priya. Now, uh, Priya, you're using some nice grammar, like present perfect progressive, I've been working. I strongly recommend everybody that you use the uh, full auxiliary verb and not the contracted form. So I have been, emphasize it. Well, I have been working at the industry and commerce ministry for the past five years. as a manager, as well as previously, I used to work at the district secretariat office for two years as a relations officer. Maybe like a public relations officer. That's what I'm guessing you mean by this, but I could be wrong. There are a lot of different jobs and job titles. All right, um, so here's an example where we don't have the full answer and we go a little bit off topic, okay? Um, the question is present tense. Do you work or study, right? It's asking about now. It's not really asking about the past and I don't really recommend changing the tense like what you did in the past or what you plan to do in the future, um, stay with the question, okay? So it's not the end of the world, but you want to prepare your mind for answering the questions precisely for the whole speaking interview. And when you kind of include information like this, I used to work at the district secretariat office. It sounds like good English, but it's not really useful in the context because the examiner is not asking you about that, right? Um, so it would be better, Priya, to say something like, and I'm studying for the IELTS exam because when I get a band 7.5 or higher, I can get a promotion, okay? So that would be a better way to finish this because it answers the question of study, right? We know that you work, so do you study? It seems like you do because you're in the IELTS exam, so it's a bit of a loaded question. Loaded question means the examiner knows that you're studying because you're obviously, you know, learning English to some capacity to sit the IELTS exam. So they kind of know already that like, mm, the students should be saying something like, I'm studying English for the purpose of, a, B, C, D, right? Does that make sense, everybody? So really, you know, uh, focus on your communication, right? Like really pay attention to having the exact information that the, the examiner is uh, looking for, right? So, okay, um, and then, because the questions are related, they're connected, that's another reason it's so important to be on topic because look at this next question. The next question is, what do you like about your work or school? So if you're not talking about your work or school, it that question kind of feels awkward. It's like, oh, I was talking about my hobby there a second ago. And now he's, oh, you know, I should have been talking about work. Um, all right, so what do you like about your work or school? All right, Anahita. One of our very studious members. Anahita says, what I like about my school is that I can boost my communication skills as well as general knowledge by reading the materials and talking with my educators and classmates. Now I'm more comfortable uh, when I'm in a professional um, interaction sure okay Anahita that's really good that's a that's a great answer um, 
notice that the question is what do you like about your work or school and Anahita very cleverly just uses that question in her answer so Anahita says what I like about my school is that uh, that's brilliant that's a great way to start your answer I highly highly recommend students uh, to practice and implement using the question when you're answering the uh, IELTS uh, examiner okay so this is a very important tip and Anahita has heard me say this probably many times before and it's very very true okay uh, make sure to uh, practice and implement using the question in your uh, response for the IELTS exam this improves your thinking time, your coherence, your fluency, and helps you stay on topic. Okay, so there are many, many reasons to do this. These are some of the important ones. It improves your thinking time. So when you say, well, uh, what I like about my school is that it's literally lit giving my brain time to turn and think and come up with an answer, okay? Um, your coherence. Uh, immediately the examiner knows that you more or less likely understood the question and it makes sense. You're directing the attention to the school in this case. Your fluency. You're starting right away. You're speaking, right? and helps you to stay on topic okay now one extra step to get those high high band scores right is to paraphrase uh, when you do this so to boost your mark when reflecting the question paraphrase it as much as possible while staying fluent okay so if we go back to what Anahita said here right Anahita says what I like about my school is that now what do you like about your work or school so here some of the easiest parts to paraphrase are like and school right Anahita so what could Anahita say instead of the word like or school to use the question and to boost coherence and vocabulary or lexical resource, right? Okay, so what can Anahita do? What could, what could she say? I know there's a little bit of a delay, so that's why I'm giving... Anahita says adore. Adore is not actually that good to use in this situation. Adore would be not so much for work or studies. It would be for some kind of a hobby maybe or a person. I adore a human being, another person, right? So instead of adore, there could be some other words. Don't overcomplicate it. That's right, Dat. So Dat says, how about just saying enjoy? Yeah. A lot of these paraphrases, they don't need to be complicated. They just need to be a simple synonym replacement, right? Um, what I enjoy about... Now, when you're paraphrasing nouns, okay, this is an important tip here, all right? A really great way to paraphrase nouns... Okay, this is another important tip. I'll add it to this one because that makes sense, okay? So when you paraphrase nouns, I should do it a little bit different. When you paraphrase nouns, use a more specific noun, okay? So I know that Anahita is over uh, in the east coast of Canada. So, and I'm pretty sure, Anahita, that your school is college or university, but even if it's not, that's fine. If it's vocational school, it's vocational school. Um, so you could say, for example, instead of my school, um, you could say college, okay, or university. So what I enjoy about my college is that, right? So notice the question again. 
What do you like about your work or school? What I enjoy about my college is that. Okay. Um, try to, so just as a quick little exercise here, everybody, uh, please answer this question again and start the question, uh, or start your, sorry, let me say that one more time. So let's do this together. Start your answer by using this question, what do you like about your work or school, and paraphrase it a little bit, okay? So just like I did here, what I enjoy about my college is that, okay? So do that, there are many different ways. Think about the specific school that you're going to. Um, maybe if you go to an IELTS Academy, you can say what I enjoy about my IELTS Academy, um, what I enjoy about my Technical Institute, okay? What I enjoy about my um, university or what I enjoy at the University of Toronto is, all right? So try it again just to kind of get this concept into your head. Use the question, paraphrase the question, practice that every single time so that when you get to your IELTS exam, you're just naturally doing that. And I guarantee that you'll get a better score. Okay. All right, Emron, very nice. So Emron says this. What I enjoy about my university is as a research assistant, I study lots of new content about my field and it is very innovative and exciting. My field of uh, biomedical technology Okay, let's be a little bit more specific, Emron. And now, it's a great answer. All right. Okay, uh, Lydia has this answer. Nice, Lydia. So Lydia says, what I enjoy about my part-time job is that when I respond to university students' academic issues, it helps me to think critically and uh, take split second decisions. Yes, it's very British. Um, in uh, Canada, US, we say make uh, split second decisions. Okay. Pink Poga. Very nice. That's exactly what I was looking for. So, uh, Pinky Poga says, what I enjoy about my college is that I can network with a lot of mates and some really talented professors who help me in my personality and academic development, not construction development. Okay, Pinky Poga, good. Nice, fluent, long answer. All right, so you get the idea. Um, let's do this. Part one. Let's talk about friends, okay? So you're getting into it. You're definitely getting marked for these. Let's talk about friends. Now, as soon as you hear the word friends, you know that, okay, that's going to be a word that uh, comes up often. So you should think about different ways to express friends and friendship and vocabulary that's associated with friends. So. When you think about friends, what words do you think about? You think about maybe the word pals. Uh, you think maybe about the word buddies or buddy. Acquaintance. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Dow says maybe you think about the word homies. It's very colloquial, but sure, homies. Dudes and dudettes, I think like that, something like that, dudettes, dudette, okay, sure, fellas, mates, yep, yeah. okay, 
Uh, Mates is very um, uh, Australian, for sure. Okay. Brotherhood, sure. All right, good. Best friend, childhood friend. So those adjectives, those are good to think about as well. Best friend. A uh, common way to say that is BFF these days. Best friend, best friend for life, right? BFF. Um, childhood friend. Sure. Okay, good. So those words, like a uh, real, should play through your head as soon as the examiner says, let's talk about friends. All right, and then the examiner asks you, how often do you meet your friends? Um, bestie is good too, Domenico, absolutely. So give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. How often uh, do you meet your friends? Nice full sentence answer, okay. All right, uh, Nipa has this answer for us. Nipa says, I usually meet my friends once or twice in a month. As a university student, I don't have enough time to hang out with my friends, but when I have time, I try to meet my friends at a cafe or my home. Really? Only once or twice a month? That's not a lot, Nipa, at all, even if you're busy. Okay. Um, so... I don't often get together with my close friends. I usually meet my BFFs once or twice in a month, okay? Uh, so Nipa, take a look. What I'm doing here is I'm basically using the question and paraphrasing, right? I don't often get together with my close friends. How often do you meet your friends? I don't often uh, get together with my close friends, right? So get together is the paraphrase here for meet, okay? Verbs are often easy to paraphrase with phrasal verbs, right? I usually meet my BFFs once or twice in a month. As a university student, I don't have enough time to hang out with them. But when I have a few hours on the weekends, I try to meet with them in a cafe or my home. Now you're going from like a band six, seven to a band nine level of answer, okay? Sadur, nice to see you in the class. I haven't seen you, one of our more recent members. Great, good for you, Sadur. Sadur has uh, this answer for us. Okay, Sadur says, I usually meet with my pals every day because we work in the same company and of the same department. Mm-hmm, that's a nice start. Okay. And you want to maybe, when you have this kind of an answer, Sadur, give a little bit more information, just a nice smooth example. So, I met with my friend Terry for at least, uh, few hours yesterday we had a good meeting in the office and then we went uh, for lunch and enjoyed a casual chat all right so uh, that would be uh, a little bit of extra to get you from that band seven to that band nine Okay, band nine, the examiner's looking for fluency, right? So it's a 15 minute interview, and if you're speaking fluent English, then you should have at least about this much content for even the simpler questions in the beginning, okay? Because um, if I look at my clock here, 
and I look at the second hand, um, this answer, let me tell you how many seconds it takes. I usually meet with my pals every day because we work in the same company and the same department. I met my friend Terry for at least a couple hours yesterday. We had a good meeting in the office and then we went for lunch and enjoyed a casual chat. That was 14 seconds. Okay, so this response with fluent English uh, and again, I said to you that I'm speaking at about a medium level of speed, okay? So with fluent English, uh, on the fast side, this would be about 11 seconds. Um, and on the slow side, this could be as much as, let's say, 20 seconds. Okay? Nevertheless, even at 20 seconds, it's not a lot of time. Okay, in a 15 minute interview, if you think about it, you can give a lot of 20 second answers. Okay, now I know you've got the long part, part two, but that takes about, let's say, three minutes, four minutes. So even if your exam is the minimum time of 12 minutes, in nine minutes, the questions are very quick. So the questions only take seconds for the examiner. They take maybe six, seven seconds, right? So if you think about it, this answer takes about 11 to 20 seconds, right? You can have a lot of these kinds of answers with fluent English, okay? All right, make sense? Yeah, okay. If you only answer half of this, like if you only say, I usually meet with my pals every day because we work in the same company in the same department, th until here, this is only like a five second answer. Okay, that's short, all right? The examiner will ask you a lot of questions if you're only giving these very short answers, okay? All right, that makes sense, right? Okay. All right, um, now, uh, here, the next question, let's do it. So what do you usually do with your friends, okay? Most of the time, give me a nice uh, full sentence answer. I'm going to give you one here as well, um, and then we'll compare. Most of the time uh, when I meet with my pals, I like to uh, go for hikes in nature or uh, stay in and cook. Uh, delicious meal. I find that uh, both of these activities are not only healthy and satisfying, but also facilitate uh, good conversation and allow for deep connections. My friend uh, Corey and I got into some heavy uh, philosophy while eating a bowl of home uh, cooked uh, spaghetti the um, other day. All right. All right. Okay, um, so this would be like your band nine level answer, okay? Two activities, clear explanation, smooth example, right? That's what we're going for, using the question. Use the question, two activities, clear example, including a correlative conjunction for complex grammar and a smooth example. Let me show you what I mean. What do you usually, right? Uh, most of the time. That's my paraphrase. With your friends. Meet with my pals. I like to go for hikes. Just coming up with it, right? One answer in nature or stay in and cook a delicious meal. 
Second answer, two activities. I don't go off about movies and um, drinking beers and going for runs and going swimming. There's no point to just list, list, list activities, okay? That's not going to help you. It's better to give an explanation. Um, I find that both of these activities are not only, but also, this is your correlative conjunction, emphasizing the reasons for why I do this, okay? Uh, deep connections, right? That's a nice collocation. And then, just a smooth example, my friend Corey and I got into some heavy philosophy. Again, that's a nice expressive form of English there while eating a bowl of home-cooked spaghetti the other day. And again, this would probably take me about maybe 15 seconds. And that's perfectly okay. It's on mark. It's accurate. That's what we want. Okay? All right? So what do you usually do with your friends? Most of the time when I meet with my pals, I like to go for hikes in nature or stay in and cook a delicious meal. I find that both of these activities are not only healthy and satisfying, but also facilitate good conversation and allow for deep connections. My friend Corey and I got into some heavy philosophy while eating a bowl of home-cooked spaghetti the other day. All right. Ubadulayev says... I have a wide circle of close friends and apparently we can play soccer together, seven against seven. We tend to get together every Sunday and we have a great time. All right, not bad. Ubadulayev, um, the first part of this is irrelevant. I have a wide circle of close friends. Okay, well I see why you're saying that because it allows you to play soccer, so it's fine, yep. Um, let's take out the apparently. Apparently means that you're not sure, okay? Um, I would say, here, let me correct this actually so you can see the correction, okay? Instead of and apparently, just use the word so, okay? Then it makes sense why you're saying I have a wide circle of close friends, okay? Um, and I would say something like this, Ubadulayev, if I gave this answer. I am fortunate because I have a wide circle of close friends, so we can play soccer together, uh, seven against seven, when we meet up uh, for some fun and exercise. Okay. We tend to get together every Sunday and we have a great time. Okay, now it's a more natural, coherent response, Ubadulayev, okay? So I am fortunate because I have a wide circle of close friends so we can play soccer together, seven against seven, when we meet up for some fun and exercise. We tend to get together every Sunday and we have a great time. Okay, now it's on spot, okay? All right, don't go off topic, Ubadulayev. That's enough. Clarity is what we're going for here. All right, students, so you have lots of tips from me, lots of advice. Now, let's give you a chance to practice this with me by actually speaking, okay? So talking to me, and this is how you do it. Um, Amra has already read my mind and put the instructions into the chat. The very, very first step is to go to our website. This is free, by the way, you don't have to pay. Don't run away, I want you to practice. And it's a chance for everybody to practice. So go to aehelp.com and uh, to sign up for a free version of the course, just click the green button. For those of you who are like, hey, this is great, I wanna join these live classes all the time, um, I just want access to all the practice exams and videos, then you can click the big red button uh, that's above my head there, make a one-time payment and get access for the rest of your life, for the next 100 years. 
I'm sure we will be around for a long time. We've been here for almost 20 years helping students with the IELTS exam, so we're probably going to be here for a long, long time uh, helping you. And IELTS is not going anywhere because the world is globalizing and we need a standard uh, test of English uh, as the global language. So anyway, um, back to Mark here, my student account. So once you've created your account or you have access, you go to my student account. Uh, in your my uh, student account, you've got lots of goodies, uh, computer-based practice exams, full online academic IELTS course, and then you've got this uh, student partner speaking right there. Okay, uh, click on that. Again, it's kind of above my head there floating around. All right. And uh, when you are in this window, uh, this is our chat interface. You're going to see your classmates. We've got Mahmoud, Anahita, Angel, Vishal, Fuang, Lydia, Domenico, Raghav, Jasdeep, Sunny, all hanging out here. And uh, some of them are already volunteering. You can volunteer by clicking this blue envelope that's going to be next to my name, uh, which is in here, listed as master, all capital, very easy to see, okay? And then you send me a message like, I want to speak or I want to try this, let me volunteer, and then we'll get into it. So uh, we've got Vishal here. Let me reach out to Vishal and see if he's with us and I can contact him check your microphone students check to make sure your system's working okay you might have to use a VPN in some countries in some places so Vishal are you Ugh, I'm yelling at you oh Amir don't call me okay um, Vishal are you ready I'll contact you and then I'll call you okay it's the most organized way to do this Oh, Vishal, if you're there, give me a sign. Good. Hello, Vishal. I don't hear you, Vishal, so I'm not sure if your microphone is connected or if you're... Uh, connected to the hub but uh, check out what's going on there Vishal on your end and then uh, I'll circle back to you okay meanwhile I'll try somebody else all right let's try Fuang Fuang is very very studious and a hard learner Fuang are you ready all right All right. Hi, Fuang. Hi, sir. All right. How are you today? Um, I'm doing fantastic. How about you, sir? I'm also doing very well. How is your week going so far? Mm, well, uh, I have a lot of assignments uh, on my university because I have just started my new semester, sir. So. Okay, your new semester started. What's your most difficult assignment so far? Mm, about business law, sir. Business law? Yeah. Is it local law for Vietnam or international business law? Um, by, um, by the important and exporting in uh, law in business. So, mm -hmm. so international. <laughs> Yeah, import export yeah. laws. It would be inter uh, it would fall under the category of international business law. Sounds like fun, Fong. Sounds like fun. All right, uh, let's get into some IELTS questions. Are you ready? I'm ready, sir. Here we go. Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. May I see your identification? Uh, yes, gladly. Here's my passport, which I have you for registration. Please have a look at my credentials. What is your full name? Um, my given names are Fung Kang and my family names are Hong Wing. Please refer to me as Fong. Do you work or study? Uh, currently, I'm both working and studying. 
I've been working as a personal trainer at the Fitness 24 Gym Center for two years, and I'm now in my second year majoring in international business at FTU2. In my spare time, I'm tutoring days for youngsters as a part of my hobbies, specializing in traditional Chinese days. What do you like about your school? Um, what I enjoy about my uh, work is that uh, working as both a personal trainer at the gyms and tutoring youngsters at dancing has brought me a host of benefits. Uh, my working condition is not only well paid, uh, but also I can um, uh, learn a significant sharing from both my students and my colleagues that give me a change to broaden my horizon. Let's talk about friends. How often do you meet your friends? Uh, well, back in the day, I used to get together with my homies and watch every day and every time. Um, however, nowadays, we are on up in our ear in our work. So we only see each other at the weekend and maybe three to four times a month. So for some news and coffee to gossip and spill the tea, like last Saturday, uh, Saturdays, my brain and I have some barbecue as well as uh, karaoke and Sky Star Treasury. Awesome, we'll stop there. <sighs> Alright, that was really good. Um, so, uh, Fuang, that would easily get you, uh, I think, a band 8 because it was very good English. Um, so, very good English is a band 8. Um, for sure. Uh, again, I think that to get you to a band nine is just a matter of practice and pronunciation at this point. But that was almost no mistakes. And um, you had really good vocabulary. Uh, I, you even got me kind of smiling. Like back in the day, I used to get, get together with my homies. Um, yeah, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay. Um, one kind of odd mistake. I asked you, what do you like about your school? And you told me about your work. Uh, pay attention to the question, Fuang. So if I say, what do you like about your school? I didn't say work. I just said school. Make sure you're talking about school because you talked about work as a personal trainer. And that would be off topic, right? So careful, careful. Always listen to the examiner. Okay. Okay, sir. All right. Do you actually work as a personal trainer? Uh, yes, sir. Um, if I'm not mistaken, from uh, 2018, uh, I have a uh, dip in um, uh, in gyms, uh, in workouts, so I really like it. And I work as a personal trainer at the Fitness 24 Center for two years. Awesome. That's good to hear. You've got your head in the right place, Fong. Exercise and a healthy body is a healthy mind, so good for you. That's great. Thank you so much for volunteering, uh, Fong, and showcasing your English. That was really great. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate uh, that you have me uh, give feedback a lot. You're very welcome. And just actually one more point, Fong. I can hear that your pronunciation is improving. So in your answers today, I felt like it was clearer. I could understand you easier, for sure. So whatever you're doing is working. Okay, keep keep doing that. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. And happy birthday soon, sir. Oh, thank you, Fong. I appreciate you remembering. Thanks, Fong. Bye for now. Bye-bye, sir. All right, that was fun. Those are some really great answers. Um, students, that's actually a very good introduction to how you should be answering these questions. Fuang really p paid attention to a lot of points in the class about using uh, the question, using those correlative conjunctions. So that was really, really good. Okay. All right, uh, Lydia, just moving along the list here a little bit. Lydia, are you ready? Yeah, that was really nice, Fong. And I and I bet you some of your classmates there, um, some classmates, uh, Angel, Carolina, Amra, uh, did you find uh, Fong's uh, pronunciation a little bit easier to um, understand today? Maybe I don't know if it's just me. I'm getting used to Fong's voice, but I, I thought it was, I thought it was clearer, right? All right, um, Lydia. Yeah, Siobhan says yeah, yeah. Okay. Jayani says, yes, she's improving. Carolina agrees too, yeah. Domenico says, definitely. See, there you go. So it's not just me, Fuang. You definitely are improving your pronunciation. Okay, Lydia.
Hello. Hi, Lydia. Hello, Mr. Edwin. How are you? I am doing superb. How are you? I'm doing very fantastic. Awesome. Okay. And how is your week so far? Any exciting turn of events? Yes, actually, I'm um, going to the university for my part-time job during the summer vacation. And also another exciting news, um, I contacted one of the co-organizers for the TED Talk. So I'm planning to prepare my speech outline uh, next week. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah, you were we were talking about your TED Talk ambitions and you're going through with it. That's really exciting. Do keep sharing. I'm, I'm, we're, I'm... Yeah, of course, Mr. Adrian. I will certainly send you email at like taking your perspective about the topic that I will talk about. Okay, sure. I would love to uh, put in my two bits, if you will, <laughs> on the topic. So let <laughs> me know. Uh, sounds good. Okay, Lydia, let's jump into some questions. Um, let's talk about friends. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, how often do you meet your friends? Um, I usually meet my friends face to face three times a month and four times a week by conducting virtual meetings on either Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Last month, my colleagues and I had online meetings where we can discuss the, op uh, the upcoming events such as volunteering to host new students in open days. What do you usually do with your friends? Um, there is an assortment of pursuits that I frequently do with my friends, Sarah and Khalud, such as attending international conferences in Dubai and Sharjah about the linkage between neuroscience and leadership. Um, we also practice for the AS exam on a daily basis for two hours to complete our master's degree abroad, as well as sharing our perspectives about inform about um, informative books that we have read. Where did you meet your best friend? Um, I met my indefatigable and loyal friend Khalud last week uh, during a uh, summer vacation in the shopping mall. Uh, Khalud and I reside in the same district where it facilitates our special needs. So we plan to go to Outlet Collection Mall that took around 10 minutes to reach it. And we watched the Mission Impossible movie, which included spectacular stunts. And um, we also purchased some stationary supplies for our university education. Okay, I'm going to give you some feedback here. Um, so. I will give you a band eight for that, which is <clears throat> very good English, but it's tricky. Um, some examiners might give you a nine, some might give you a seven. Uh, why such a big difference? It's unusual. Uh, it depends how much your examiner is uh, focusing on content. You have to be careful with content here. So really good pronunciation, really good fluency, really good coherence, or sorry, really good um, grammar. All of these a lexical resource, all of these would be pretty much a band nine, except for the coherence mark. And the reason why is because um, you're kind of going off topic and not answering the question. So be really careful, Lydia. Uh, focus not only on the quality of your speech, which is very good, but really focus on the question that you're answering, okay? Uh, so here, when I asked you, um, how often do you meet your friends? You had a really good start. You said, I usually meet my friends face to face a certain number of times, and then through virtual meetings a certain number of times. And that was, you know, fantastic. So far, it was great. It was band nine. And then you said, Last week I met my colleagues. And I was like, Your colleagues, but I'm asking about your friends. So you lost me. As soon as you use the word colleagues, I got confused. I'm like, oh, I thought we were talking about your friends. And it was the very first question where I say, like, let's talk about friends, right? So you have to make sure that you don't make that kind of accidental mistake. Now, I realized later, Lydia, why you made that mistake. Because it sounds to me like several of your colleagues are your friends. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Okay. You have to make that clear for me because if I'm trying to figure that out as you're going along, then I'm focusing on that instead of what you're actually saying. Does that make sense? Mm. Right? So you have to say, last week 
my colleagues who are also my friends, right? It's that little piece who that makes it clear for me, who are also my friends. And I met for, uh, and then you finish the sentence. And then it's clear that, you know, it wasn't, so that, that word friends, it's like, um, and this is important advice for everybody. So everybody listen up. As soon as you pinpoint the subject of the question, in this case, friends, that word, that subject has to basically flash like a light in your head throughout your response. Does that make sense, Lydia? Uh, yes, Mr. Adrian. Right. Because actually, at the beginning, I thought uh, colleagues are the same as friends in meaning, but they are not. They, absolutely they are completely not. different, right? Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, uh, there's yeah, there's no no similarity there. So, a co a co in fact, often when we say co-worker co-worker will almost imply a friendship more than a colleague a colleague is a very professional expression and so it's almost devoid or cold of the concept of friendship right it's like they're my colleague they're not my friend right so it's 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 almost like anything but friend right you have to really voice that they're your friend my colleague who is also my friend like we have to voice it okay that's pretty much that, yeah. Yeah, and so that's that's the only reason, right? Um, same with the following question. So again, content, 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 right? So uh, where did you meet your best friend? Um, what was that word you used? That was a new word for me, I think. You said, um, I met my indefatigable. Yeah, uh, uh, it is uh, indefatigable. It means energetic. Okay, that's a new word for me. I've never heard that used or I've never read it anywhere. Indefatigable. Okay, it's a probably... Probably one of the reasons that's not so common, Lydia, is because it seems very difficult to pronounce even for a native speaker. So it's probably... It is, uh, <laughs> yes, actually, because I'm reading a book and there are some new vocabularies I've never heard about. So I'm learning some words from that book and I'm using them in my daily speech. Mm -hmm. And by the way, um, this is again for everybody, so not just for Lydia. Uh, if you're using a piece of vocabulary like Lydia just did here with the indefatigable, uh, meaning energetic, and and the examiner is not 100% sure of what that means. I kind of guess, so examiners are expert users of the English language, so they can usually understand the vocabulary from content. And I felt that it was something to do with the characteristic of collude. So I had an idea that it was a accurate word. It sounded correct in context. Um, so they won't take marks. They won't be like, I don't know that word minus a mark. No, they'll they'll ch maybe even listen back and check the word after. So that's what I would have done. Had I been your IELTS examiner, I would have probably played the recording because they're recording the conversation. I would have played the recording and checked the meaning of this word to see if you're using it correctly and then learned a new word myself. OK, mm -hmm. so that was good. That was good. Um, the question is, where did you meet your best friend? And you said last summer during a vacation, and then you kind of started going off about going to a mall and watching Mission Impossible. Is that where you met your friend is during uh, this adventure to this mall watching the movie? I wasn't quite clear on that. It was a little bit confusing yeah, for me. Um, yeah, actually, because I mentioned uh, the name of the shopping mall. So instead, I must like say, going to the shopping mall directly without saying the name of it, right? Because I said it is called Outlet Collection Mall. Yeah, so the connect, yeah, exactly. So it, I wasn't a hundred percent clear on what was going on there. So that's where you want to focus a little bit more again is like here the location, right? So we met mm -hmm. at this mall, which is in my city of, and then go from there, okay? Okay, mister. All right, so Lydia, overall very good. Just one caution content okay really pay attention mm. to content all right yes mr adrian clear okay bye lydia have a great rest of your day thank and i you. look forward to your email yeah for sure thank you so much mr adrian enjoy your day thank you bye lydia bye bye all right let's give lydia and fuang a thumbs up that was really good those are some really great answers so nicely done all right um let's jump a little bit to the bottom of the list uh just because uh you know, going from the top, let's go a little bit from the bottom. Uh, Anahita is here with us. Anahita, are you ready? Okay. Now, don't worry, Domenico, you're on my radar. If not today, tomorrow. Okay. So, Anahita, if you're there. Hi, sir. Hi, Anahita. How are you? I am good, thanks. How about you? 
I am doing fantastic. How's your week so far on the East Coast? It is going so uh, really well because I'm doing fabulous because I have just uh, uh, finished reading strategies and uh, until the end, so I just need to review it. All right, good. Yeah, nothing like a bit of uh, learning or a bit of exercise to feel positive, right, Anahita? Yes, that's true. Yeah, anything that makes us better makes us happy usually. All right, Anahita, let's talk about friends. Here we go. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Where did you meet your best friend? Uh, I met my best friend, my uh, devoted friend when I was uh, at uh, 10th grade in a math class in the high school. Uh, she was very uh, uh, good looking and uh, she uh, was really friendly from the first time, from my first interaction with her. How do you keep in touch with your friends? I both keep, I communicate with my uh, best uh, uh, homies through both uh, virtually and face to face, face to face because uh, when uh, when my friends are uh, in remote areas, I cannot uh, talk to them uh, in real life. So uh, I need to communicate. Can I repeat, sir? Yes. How do you keep in touch with your friends? I communicate with my friends who are far away from me or uh, in remote areas from me, virtually through Clubhouse or uh, so or um, WhatsApp, and I. Um, contact with those who are uh, with whom uh, I can uh, have face-to-face uh, -face communication by uh, parties and uh, either by uh, uh, inviting them to my house or, or going to their houses. Okay. Let me just give you some feedback for that. Okay, um, Anahita, those are some good answers. So you'd probably get about a band uh, 6.5 to 7 um, for those, somewhere in that range, all right? Uh, which is good, um, it's, it's solid. Now, uh, what you want to focus on is not overthinking. So Anahita, I think that you, know, you can do a little bit better if you just don't overthink. So you said, I met my best friend, and then you realized, oh, I didn't paraphrase best friend, so you quickly paraphrased it and said devoted friend, right? Yes. Don't do that. Nobody should do that. So it's not just for you. This is a tip for everybody, okay? Once you've said it, just go with it. So don't go back and paraphrase it. Paraphrase it later, right? So uh, once you said, I met my best friend, then just keep going. Um, when I was in 10th grade in my high school. And then if you thought about devoted friend, put it in later, naturally. Um, we are devoted friends since that time okay, sir. and we contact each other at least a couple times a week so stick it in later don't you know don't don't for don't force language and this is an, an important tip for everybody should you should never force a paraphrase or you should never force an idiom or never force vocabulary or grammar it should come naturally if you're forcing the language it will actually decrease your score because it doesn't sound natural and to get into those high band scores like 7.5, 8, 8.59 um, you have to sound natural and forcing the language definitely does not sound natural even if it's advanced vocabulary okay so don't force the language on a heat I know it's it's weird it's like well then how do I improve like how do I get better if I'm not forcing language use it just really focus on using it naturally like in this case so I met my best friend when I was in 10th grade in my high school we are devoted friends since that time and we contact each other at least a couple times each week okay, okay. you said she was very good looking we don't really say very good looking especially between girls um, what do you think uh, would be a better word here instead of she was very good looking uh, pretty or beautiful yeah, I thought she was very pretty, for sure, is a nice, natural way. I think, I thought uh, she was very pretty from the first time I saw her. Um, and she was very friendly from our first interaction. That was a good word, by the way, first interaction. So it was good. Okay, just repeat after me, uh, Anahita, and everybody else, you can repeat as well. So 
I'm going to say it once and then repeat after me, Anahita. So, I met my best friend when I was in 10th grade in my high school. We are devoted friends since that time and we contact each other at least a couple times a week. I thought she was very pretty from the first time I saw her and she was very friendly from our first interaction. I met my best friend when I was in 10th grade in my high school. We are devoted friends since that time and we contact each other at least a couple times each week. I thought she was very pretty from first time I saw her and she was very friendly from my first interaction. Much better, okay? That's much more natural, much less forced, okay? Um, same, uh, same with this next question. So I think you were kind of forcing some elements and it was tricky. However, you did something very smart and I want to emphasize this point. So you started to answer and then you realized that your answer was just kind of very all over the place and confusing and you got to a point where you thought, mm, it's just better if I restart this answer. I'm just going nowhere here. Uh, that's a really good strategy. Okay, once or twice in the speaking, especially a lot of people are really nervous, it's okay to restart your answer. It's much, much better to do that than to give an answer that really is doesn't make sense and it's scrambled, it's all over the place. So instead of saying, can I repeat, sir? Because that's what you said, Anahita, right? Is can I repeat, yeah. sir? Okay. Yes. There's a little bit better way that you can, you can do this. So instead of saying, can I repeat, sir? Um, a little bit more natural or better in content is I'm nervous and I'm not making much sense. Like literally name what you're doing, right? I'm nervous and I'm not making much sense. Okay, I'm nervous and I'm not making much sense. Uh, please allow me to start that again. Uh, please allow me to start that again. Okay, and then I'm sure the examiner, most of them that are, you know, uh, being professional should say yes okay um, and then they might even ask you the question again okay so just repeat this after me I'm nervous and I'm not making much sense please allow me to start that again I'm nervous and I'm not making much sense please allow me to start that again okay and then you can say uh, to keep in contact with my friends face to face I invite them to my house or go to parties and when I meet with them virtually it's through whatsapp or clubhouse Okay, so okay. that's how you do it. All right, um, Anahita, thank you so much for volunteering and showcasing your English and um, keep going. You're doing fantastic. Your hard work will pay off for sure, okay? Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot for having me, a chance to speak. You're very, very welcome. Bye, Anahita. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, sir. Have a good day. All right, that was Anahita. Thumbs up to Anahita. Really, really good, okay? All right, uh, Lee, uh, let's see what's going on with Lee this morning. Well, morning, my time. Let's check in with Lee. <clears throat> Lee, are you ready? Here we go. All right, lots of thumbs up for Anahita. Anahita, you're getting better and better. Absolutely, very, very good. Slow it down, ask for time, use the question, think about it. Okay, all right. All right, there's Lee. Hi, Lee. Oh, so we meet again. <laughs> we do indeed, Lee. How is your day? Um, I'm doing great. Yourself? I am doing well. Thank you for asking. Absolutely. Uh, Lee, can you remind me where in the world you are situated at the moment? I'm in Vietnam, of course. All right. What part of Vietnam? Um, I'm in Thanh Hoa Pha province is in the middle portion of Vietnam. It's in the center, okay, all right. So do you have access to ocean there? Um, yeah, actually, the beach is like a 15, is like a, just a 15 minute walk from where I am right now. Oh, that's awesome, and it's probably nice warm water, right? Well, not, it would be, it would, it is definitely warm, but it's not very nice, and it would be better if people hadn't like, throw a lot of garbage in the sea. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Well, we have some very clean water here where I am on Vancouver Island, but it's cold even in the summer. It's cold because we're kind of in the North yeah. Pacific. So yeah, us humans, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. I All think right. we're going topic here. <laughs> we are, Lee. We are. So we're going to get back to topic. Are you ready? Okay, I am. All right, then let's talk about friends. Here we go. 
how do you keep in touch with your friends? Well, I uh, keep in contact with I contact my friends via uh, mobile phone apps like Messenger, where I can send my messages and receive them in less than a second, or just call them on a daily basis because that is the simplest way of contacting another person. Have the games you play with your friends changed in the last 10 years? Um, I remember uh, around 10 decades ago, uh, the game ha has a significant difference compared to nowadays when back then games were simple uh, and w were you can play them by yourself and no uh, other visual in no other individuals are necessary but nowadays it is all about playing with your friends so uh, you need some acquaintances or just get your best friends to play with a game with you if you could give a gift to one of your friends what would you give and who would you give it to i would give my best friend uh Ethan, a nice uh, leather jacket because he is always uh, he has always tell me that he is cold even though it is in Vietnam where the climate is rather um, hot. Besides, it helps him uh, isolate himself from all the impurities that he often encounters uh, day in day out. That is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For this part, I will show you some questions and you'll have one minute to read these. Okay, we're not going to do that right now, Lee, but uh, I will give you some feedback. Okay, your mark at this point is like a 5.5 .5 to six, although I want to give you a better mark because I think your English is better. I can't with these answers. I will show you why your coherence mark is low and you need to fix that, okay? Um, let me show you what's going on here. So I said, how do you keep in touch with your friends? You said, well, uh, first of all, I like how you stopped to think before you answered. That was good. You kind of you thought about it and then you answered. And that's good. OK, you're still fluent. And this is a tip for everybody. You're still fluent if you stop for a few seconds to think about what you say. OK, fluency is not about answering super quick. OK, it's about giving uh, smooth answers. So you said, well, I keep in contact uh, and then you said I contact you were really thinking about how to um, paraphrase keep in touch again the same advice I gave Anahita don't worry about it if you start with the same words it's okay you can always paraphrase later okay so is that clearly so don't force the paraphrasing okay okay all right so you said well I keep in contact uh, and then you said I contact you don't need that uh, second eye contact uh, my friends via mobile phone apps like messenger uh, which was good uh, yep messenger where I can send and receive messages within seconds sure I like how you explain that okay um, you can always give an example Lee like you can say I sent uh, at least uh, 10 uh, messages uh, to various friends yesterday okay yeah. Um, so remember that smooth example always helps you to stay more fluent. And that was good. And until then, you were, you know, band 7.5. You were between good and very good. That was a great answer. Um, and then it started to go a little bit strange. Um, I asked you, have the games you play with your friends changed in the last 10 years? And you said, um, I remember around 10 decades ago. 10 decades uh, ago is a... Oh, oh my God. Hundred years ago, I'm like, wow. Um, oh my god, I did. Yeah, how the, I don't know how I managed to say that actually. Well, because we're nervous, we're on the spot, right? So it happens, and it's not the end of the world. And you know, frankly, I wouldn't be too hard on you with that kind of slip of thinking. So I would realize that okay, I think he meant either ten years ago or you know a decade ago, and it, your wires just got crossed, and it's fine. It's not the end of the world, right? So um, yeah. here you meant to say a decade ago, whatever. It's not a big deal. That's not why I'm demarking you or devaluing. The where I'm starting to really devalue you happens a little bit later. You said you could play them by yourself. 
Um, oh. Suddenly we're talking about me playing games with myself or with what I'm doing, right? Uh, and now we're really off topic and we're using the wrong pronoun because the question is asking about the games you play with your friends, not the games I play with my friends, right? So now we're really kind of off topic and it just kind of floated off from there. Um, and you kept saying your friends and what you do. And I'm like, okay, but I'm asking you what you do with your friends. So your English was quite good, but the content was very confusing at that point. And that's where um, it went down a bit. So we're going to change that. We'll come back to that. Um, Lee, the last one, if you could give a gift to one of your friends, uh, use the condition. So uh, given the opportunity, okay? Okay. So use the condition. Given the opportunity, I would give my best friend Ethan um, a nice leather jacket because he always tells me he is cold even though Vietnam is hot. I thought that was good. Um, just stay on topic. Uh, it would cost me around uh, one million dong and um, I would give it to him on his birthday. Stop right so just a nice clear complete answer okay, okay uh, let's jump back to this have the games I think you can give us a better answer I want to give you a second chance here Lee do you want a second chance at this question yeah I love to okay let's do it have the games you play with your friends changed in the last 10 years um, I remembered in the last decade or so games ha has changed Games have changed dramatically. Uh, Ten years ago, games were rather simple, where you and your friends no, could stop, enjoy. Stop! 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 Uh, stop me you. and my friends. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Go for it. Me. So where me and my when me and my friends can enjoy traditional uh, games like a one clan or just. Uh, throwing rocks at each other, for example. However, nowadays games has improved, improved significantly. I could name a few examples, such as football, badminton, and other kinds of Okay, kind and of stop. Sports where and you stop can, there. Where stop I can, there. Yeah. Where I can play with my friends on a daily basis to improve our fitness and to keep ourselves entertained. Much better. Okay. Notice how now when you're saying I, me, my, my friends, it's just making a ton more sense. And you know, it's, I, I mean, you got me laughing, throwing rocks. <laughs> okay. But you, uh, yeah, know, <laughs> but you know what? The, exa the examiner will not judge your answer in that sense. So you can tell me throwing rocks and I might smile, but you know what? I will give you a good mark. Um, not because I'm smiling, but because it's a good answer. Oh, right? wait, wait, wait. So I need you, I need to add you something first. I, I won't I won't lose my mark for that or you won't lose really? marks no you won't lose marks for throwing rocks and playing badminton Thanks as a modern that. game no so the the rocks and the badminton and the soccer that's fine I don't care about that that's good English what I do care about is the correct use of pronoun so if you're using you when you should be using me that I care about that's a big mistake because that's incoherent throwing rocks is coherent sure if that's what you played with your friends 10 years ago throwing rocks at each other why not a long time ago I used to play a game with my friends where we shot fireworks at each other that wasn't the smartest game in the world but we did that so it happens um, I'm not here to judge you on the games that you play but I am here to judge you on your pronouns and your correct use of pronouns okay Okay. So keep that in mind. All right, Lee, thank you so much uh, for volunteering. Um, really pay attention. And this is for everybody else who does this often. And it's a lot of us. A lot of us do this. Don't use you. So when you're practicing for the IELTS, really pay attention to that word you and avoid it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Lee, thank you so much. Have an awesome rest of your day. And I hope your best friend gets that leather jacket one of these days. Okay. <laughs> All right. Have a good night or have a good, good night. Good day for me. Good night for you, Lee. Oh, okay. <laughs> All See right. Bye, Lee. Okay. Bye. All right. Give Lee a thumbs up. Okay. He did a fantastic job. Students, uh, this chat interface is for you. It's for you to interact with each other. I take a mental note of students that I wasn't able to get to today, like Mohammed and Domenico. Um, and I appreciate that. So keep volunteering. I'm going to be back tomorrow. Uh, but again, you can use this to continue speaking with each other. There are some sample scripts up at the top here uh, with lots of questions that you can use.
okay? Um, for everybody watching, if you like these live classes, definitely sign up for the premium version of the course by clicking this red button that's just right behind my head there. Uh, it's a one-time payment, doesn't cost a lot, uh, and uh, it'll get you on the right path for good quality learning. Free materials are okay, but for a test like IELTS, it's worth spending a couple dollars to maximize your English communication and learning. Uh, AEHelp.com, it's the red button there, okay, just above my head. Uh, click it and start your journey um, on uh, good English uh, for IELTS and for the rest of life as well. Amra, Carolina, thank you so much for moderating. I saw that you had a fair bit of work there today with a bit of spamming going on and some other content. So thanks for helping us to keep uh, the, the comment on track and the class on track and assisting everybody. Thank you, members. Uh, you're the heart and soul. Uh, thank you, subscribers and viewers. You're all amazing people. Chin up, keep learning English. It's going to make your life better. Guarantee it, no doubt about that. You're all beautiful. You're all amazing. Just remember that every minute of every day. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria for now. I will be back tomorrow. Check out aehelp.com, glshelp.com. Bye, everybody.